What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Lyndon Britt, from successwithlyndon.com, and welcome to Tipsy 2 with Lyndon. So, just to let you all know, if you happen to be watching a recording of this, you want to fast forward about two minutes, that's where the content is going to begin. As a couple of people begin to uh, come in and Facebook building my audience, I'll be saying, reading a couple of people saying hello and stuff like that. But, just came off a of vacay and enjoyed about a full week of torturing my body, man, playing playing baseball for five days straight, just running. Son, I, I come back of a, a whole shade darker and everything else like that. But today I got to ask you a question. How many times have you had to overcome the objection, even for yourself, that I don't have time? I don't have time. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So as you hop on, uh, just, uh, let me know where you're viewing from. Shout, shout out, say hello, say hello, say what's going on. Miss Angela, what's going on? Good to see you hopping on here. For everyone else, Stefano, what's up, dude? Been a long time, no see, man. We're gonna have to chat a little bit. Welcome back. Hey, I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's glad to be, I'm glad to be back in the land of the uh, marketing. So uh, as we get some couple of things rolling, got about a minute, uh, and I'll be greeting a couple more people saying how it, it feels good to be back into the groove of things. I actually thought I was gonna get an opportunity to be able to uh, do a few lives out there, but I was running like crazy when it came to baseball, man. But it's what I love to do. It's what I love to do. Five days, about why we had what seven games in a matter of five days, and they're full length games, and we were out there, and it's almost 100 degree weather out there, so we we had to deal with a little bit, but. As we're going to get these things, I'm going to get this thing rocking and rolling, man. I've been waiting to get back into it. So this whole week I've been, been focused elsewhere, and now it's time to get back down to the nitty-gritty. So if you happen to be hopping on, now is the time we're about to begin this content. But i got to ask you a question. How many times have you had to overcome the objection for yourself or you hear people tell you that I don't have time? I don't have time. And just to throw this out there, um, I, I love to be able to give a, a word, a, a scripture along with the message that I'm giving. So... Uh, you don't have to mess me back saying that's not what the Bible means. This is how I take the word of God and apply it to my business. So you're going to get a little bit of scripture. I'm not here to give you a, a uh, Bible lesson or anything like that, but this is how I, I apply the word of God to my business. All right, so we're going to go straight straight into this thing, get to rocking. Proverbs 6, verses 9 through 11. All right. Oh, a ton. Yes, a ton of sun. All right. Um, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When you get up from your sleep, when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come to you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. Poverty will come to you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. And so it, it asks the questions, how many times have you asked yourself or have you told yourself that I don't have time? Or even if you told somebody else that I don't have time. When you realize, if you go into this and look in the Proverbs 6, 9 through 11, once again, um, it, it, it's talking about... Um, not taking action in, in, in a sense of from a business aspect of it. Like I said, just how I apply the word of God to my business in the business. How long will you sit there and not take action? It says, how long will you lie there? You slug it when you get up from your sleep. And as I pertain to that, as I, and I, and I turn it into marketing sense, how long will you continue to make the excuse that I don't have time for something that you know you need to do for something that you absolutely know that you need to do? All right. So I'm going, to, I'm going to jump right into this thing. As a matter of fact, if you find this thing of value, if, if you've already found it, what I'm telling you of value, if you if you if you're resonating with the script, stuff like that, there's a share button. Go ahead and share this thing out. Love to be able to get these things. Just share, 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 share the mess out of thing to be able to get other people to be able to see. Because I know that you and as well as a lot of other people may be experiencing uh, more of that excuse that I don't have time. And you want to know how can you overcome it? So I'm gonna jump right into it. First thing I want you to do, I want, we're going to do an exercise today, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go so much into repeating myself when it comes to the scripture. You can go back and check it out, Proverbs 6, verses 9 through 11, but I'm going to ex, go on the exercise. First thing I want you to do, I want you to get a piece of paper, and if you happen to be watching a recording of this or you happen to be near something, you can kind of scribble something down. If you're driving, uh, come back to this live and do it later, okay? I want you to take a piece of paper, and I want you to write down two things. One, I want you to write down your must-dos. The things that you must do each and every day. If you got a, a young child or children that you're taking care of and stuff like that, write down whether you're getting up, you're getting them ready for school, um, you're going to work with the time you go to work and stuff like that. If you're preparing dinner, the must do's that you do. I mean, whether it's, of course, you have more to do a lot of times if you're a single parent or if you're, uh, if you're not a single parent, even if you're, um, 
even if you're in the household with someone else, but you work an opposite schedule, a lot of times, a lot of stuff that you do is still on your own while the other one's still at work. All right, so I want you to write down your must do's. I want you to write down the times that you do those. Okay, so if you have children that you get up for, uh, get up and get ready for school at six o'clock in the morning, you're gonna write down, get kids ready, six o'clock to whatever time you're done, whether it's uh, getting them feeding and st- uh, get them fed and stuff like that, and, and write that down. Next thing you must do, excuse me. Next, uh, the next uh, must do you must do. What's going on, Mr. Brian? Appreciate you having them. Hey, babe. Good to see you, uh, love. Took you long enough to come back. <laughs> Hello. Yes, it did take me long enough. All right, so the next thing I want you to write down is your work. It's a must-do. So, I mean, if you still have a job like myself, you're going to write down the time it takes you from the time you get to work to the time you get off. You're going to write it down. All right? The next must-do, like I said, if you're a single parent, a lot of times you come home, you're the provider at the house. you got to make sure homework gets done. you got to make sure dinner gets made and stuff like that, and you're getting, getting your children ready for the next day. Write down the time which you typically do. You typically have a schedule. You don't always follow it. A lot of people don't always follow it time by time, but write down the average amount of time, which is probably in between 7 to 9 o'clock or 8 to 9 o'clock if it takes you an hour or something like that. A lot of, a lot of people don't let their children eat that late. They go 7 to 8, 7 to 8.30, something like that. And write down the time, okay? These are your must do's your must do's all right if you got any other must do's write those down all right now in the next column the next thing i want you to write down is your downtime your downtime okay what i mean by your downtime sometimes parents take a little while to wake up in the morning so they will get up before they they're typically up before their children get up because they want to make sure that their children are up on time so if you get up 30 minutes earlier hour earlier than your children and stuff like that to make sure things are together perhaps you get up and make your breakfast so you can get them and get them moving along write down the time that you're up before your children are okay you're going to write down your travel time a lot of times you take your child to school or something like that um and then some people have children that are old enough to do those things for themselves so you have a little bit of extra time if you got teenagers that you don't really have to wake up and you don't have to make breakfast for and stuff like that you got that extra time in there but if you do have uh have that time i want you to write down that travel time that you have between dropping them off and you going to work okay that's your downtime after you drop them off and the time you headed to work all right, your next downtime, your lunch period. If you have a 30 minute break, a 45 minute uh, break, an hour break, I know a couple of guys that um, uh, that I work out with, they say they work and then take a two hour break and they go back and finish the rest of their day. If you've got it, write down that lunch time that you have, you're going to write down that downtime. All right, next thing, you're going to write down your travel home, whether you're driving home or you're driving to go to your children. You're going to take that, that time is downtime as well. You're going to write that as well. And then finally, after you get the kids settled all down and stuff like that, you, you get homework done and all that kind of stuff, you get them to bed. A lot of times, that's when a lot of parents sit back and be like, whew, my day is over. And they sit back and they settle down. You're going to write down that time from the time they're done. You're done getting them ready. You get them into the bed until the time you typically go to sleep. A lot of people, a lot of adults stay up till they just fall asleep, whether they're watching TV or they're doing other things. But I want you to write down that downtime as well. All right, now. I want you to look at those two things, those two list of things that you your must do's and your downtime. Okay? Now if you pay attention to your must do's and your downtime, you look at that downtime and you realize you have more downtime than you thought about. All right? So when it comes to um, doing the things that you know you need to do when you're growing your business. And the first thing you get to say is, I don't have time. I don't have time to be able to prospect. I don't have time to uh, do personal development. I don't have time to, to market my opportunity. I don't have time for me and stuff like that. I want you to look at that downtime that you have and begin to utilize that time that you have. Okay. Now I can go into a whole different live on this, but I'm going to give you a little bit of uh turn, turn this excuse of, I don't have time into a productive time period for you. Okay, when you get up in the morning, when you get up in the morning, take about 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to focus on what you want to get accomplished for the day. Not and not so much what you want to get accomplished for the day. What is it that you want to accomplish? This is going to set the tone for what you're driving towards. Okay, you're not matter of fact, you're not looking at what I want to get done today. You're looking at your ultimate goal. And you got to forgive me. There's a plane flying over me if you can hear that thing. But um you want to look at my ultimate goal, okay? I want to make this much, okay? I, w- I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this. Guess what? I want you to do that. First 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to wake up. You're going to take your quiet time, whether it's meditation, whether it's prayer, whether it's stretching, whether it's yoga. No matter what it is, you're going to take the time. You're going to focus on what it is that you want to get out of while you're working. You're going to focus on this. Is This is you focusing on your why. This is going to set the tone for what you're going to do for the remainder of the day. All right? 
then what you're going to do that downtime in between you driving, you say uh, you say you don't have time to start reading a book a person. But guess what? They have audio books. They have iPods. They have podcasts. They have SoundCloud. They have several different people that you can listen to on the stone. Start listening. Turn off the radio. Uh, I, I know a lot of people that listen to Steve Harvey in the morning, listen to Tommy, the comics and stuff like that, the jokes, the laughs, the, the music. It's all fun. It's all game and stuff like that. But I want you, if you can't turn that stuff off and begin to listen to personal development things, this is going to begin to set your mind. This is going to begin to change your mind tone and help you focus more on, believe it or not, you're going to start taking the time. When you start doing that throughout the day, you're going to start thinking even more about what I want to get accomplished in my downtime. Okay, I'm, I want to become more focused in my downtime to start utilizing this to the maximum capacity. That way I can actually get out of the situation that I want to. I listen to a book every time I get in my car. Every time. There you go. That's exactly how I started. I actually turned the radio on and start listening to podcasts from Doug Firebo, the, uh, the fire call. Love that guy. Love his stuff and, and everybody that's on the call with him. But each and every time you get in the car, you're going to cut on something personal development. Like I said, this is going to begin to train your mind to start thinking as that business person that you want to become, to, uh, to start leading you toward that success that you want to have. Your lunch period. <clears throat> you're going to take that lunch time. This is when you're going to begin to start utilizing those things, that personal development that you have, whether it's you're focusing on learning how to close, you want to learn how to approach, you want to learn how to prospect, you want to learn how to market, depending on how much time that you have to be able to pour into yourself for your goal. If you've got a 30 minute lunch, if you've got a 45 minute lunch and you know there's a webinar that you want to watch, there's another technique that you want to learn how to use in your business, break that down. You can turn on your, I mean, now you, you're walking around the computer with, in your hand. You can go and watch that webinar. If you have it downloaded, having a site you can go to, go to that and begin to watch that in increments. You'll be like, look, I can watch 30 minutes now. I When I get to the house, I can watch. There's nothing that says if there's a two-hour webinar, that I, and especially if it's recorded, nothing says that I have to watch the two hours right now. I have to get through this two hours right now. There's nothing that says that. So if you break that down, say, I'm going to watch 30 minutes. I'm going to take notes on what I can do while I'm eating my lunch. If you have an hour or two hour break, that's great. Begin to utilize that time and watch that. What's going on, uh, Miss Hope? What's going on, Danny? Appreciate y'all hopping out. I wasn't seeing that because how I have my uh, phone held in here. I didn't see your name. What's going on, uh, LB? What's going on? All right, so you're going to begin to utilize that time and start taking those notes and anything else that you need to begin to apply. If you have a laptop and you have access to Wi-Fi, begin. perhaps you could begin applying those things on that webinar that you're actually watching at that time, if you're allowed to. But at some places that you go, you can't take computers and stuff like that, which is fine. I understand that, but take notes. Whatever it may be doing on that lunch period and begin to utilize the things that you're learning on your lunch break. Okay, If you have that time and you're being prepped, Perhaps you began to use uh, user prospecting teams, uh, using your prospecting skills to be able to start prospecting on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest, any kind of social media and stuff like that, blogger, whatever it may be. Perhaps you start working on getting leads during that lunch period. Or perhaps you have leads that you need to follow up from the previous day. If you have, let's say you have, a, uh, let's say you have a 30 minute lunch break, okay? 30 minute lunch break. Literally break this thing down. All right. Now, this is going to be based on your schedule. All right. What's going on, Miss April? What you're going to do at first 10 minutes? If you got 10 minutes and you need to do some prospecting, take about 10 minutes to start doing some prospecting. Go in there, introduce yourself to five or six, 10 people with you, depending on how much time you have. Introduce, meet some people, say hello, greet yourself, send them a message, whatever it may be. Do that for five or 10 minutes. Okay. Once you get in there, you may not reach as many as you want to, but you're getting started. If you're able to do five or six, do five or six. That's what you do. The next 10 minutes, you're going to be starting to pour into, um, possibly following up, whether, you, whether you're whether you sending a text message, whether you're sending an email, a follow-up email, or perhaps you're giving a call to a lead that you had the following day, all right? During the next 30 minutes, if you are, or even, you may want to extend a little bit more time, depending on how many leads you have doing that. The next 10 minutes, take some time to, like I said, be able to pour into a training for something else that you want to learn, all right? And that's just a 30-minute break. If you got more than 30 minutes, then you can stretch each one of those out, all right? Then again, you got your downtime. After you get off work, you're driving more personal development, all right? Once you get your kids in the car, it's kind of hard to focus and stuff like that, depending on the age group. If you have to pick them up, you may have, like myself, I have an hour drive home. I got a whole hour to be able to tune into personal development, be able to help me get my mind right and start focusing on what I want to do when I get to the house because I don't have any children at home right now. So I can focus on the things that I want to do when I get home. I'm thinking about exactly what I want to do outside of uh, cooking dinner for my wife if I'm cooking or if it's her turn to cook or cleaning, whatever else. Okay. You get to the house. 
Do you think that you got to do set up where there's children cooking dinner, all that kind of stuff? You get the kids down, and guess what? You you probably most most depending on the day, a lot of uh, adults stay up for an extra um, hour to two hours, depending if they get their kids in the bed at ten o'clock. They typically go to bed unless you're just a night owl. Some people just are night owls. They'll stay up to ten. They'll stay up to ten, eleven, twelve, one to two o'clock in the morning, doing nothing but watching television, reruns your favorite shows and stuff like that. Cut it off. Cut the television off if it's recorded. Take a Sunday or something like that today to say, I'm going to devote two hours to watch TV or whatever to catch up on a couple of things because I really like this show and I really want to see it. But if you're not where you are, when you, uh, if you're not in the place where you want to be in your business, what's going on, T? Uh, and you're not in the place you want to be in your business, you got to sacrifice that time. Give that time up and start pouring into yourself so you can begin to see some results in what you want to do. All right. For, uh, once you begin to do that, say, look, I got to fin- now I watch 30 minutes on my lunch break for this webinar. OK, I'll watch another 30 minutes right here. Typically, at the end of your day, depending on what you're doing, when, uh, it's kind of hard to read for myself. It's kind of hard for me to read and it's kind of hard for me to um, watch videos and stuff like that. A lot. A lot of times if I'm not sitting up or doing something because I've already had a long day, I'm out in the sun, as you can see. And a lot of times I'm falling asleep. I'm dozing off. So I'm not really focusing on what I'm trying to get done if I'm sitting there trying to stare something and focus on reading. But if I'm actually doing Doing something like say so this is the time I'm actually doing whether I'm making slides for a webinar or if I'm actually pouring into uh, doing something and creating a, um, a, a website for someone or or even updating my website or even writing a blog or preparing my letter for the next day for my list that I have and when I'm actually doing something the time goes and I don't even realize it's 11 12 o'clock and my wife has to tell me hey come to bed that's where you begin to utilize the time when you're not doing that thing so when people come up, when you come up with this use, especially when you have your own business, start looking at that downtime and maximizing the, uh, the, 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 that downtime that you have to be able to grow your business. Start maximizing that downtime to grow your business, okay? you got to really begin to pour in yourself and start getting some results. So many people say, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time. And then the next thing you know, all they're doing is sitting up watching television. They're wondering why they're not getting results, all right? Now, we're going to go into this next thing. You get a lot of people that say that I don't, when you present your opportunity, I don't have time for that. Believe it or not, they're doing the same exact thing that you are. Why? It's just natural. It's natural habit. A lot of people want to settle down and just they they become so comfortable with what you typically what you're used to doing. Not a lot of people are willing to put in the extra work because they feel they've done enough work for the day. <clears throat> if you got something that you're trying to accomplish, get past that feeling and it's time for you to begin to pour into yourself. So how do you tell somebody how do you get over the excuse of somebody else telling you that they you get over the excuse of somebody telling you that they don't have time. Okay. Well, first thing I want to do when I'm talking to someone, when I ask them, what are some of your goals that you want to get accomplished? And a lot of times some people tell me, well, I want to make money. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to take my kids here. I want to be able to take my kids there. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to have fun here. I want to be able to have more free time. I want to be able to take vacation without having to worry about paying the bills and not having the money when I come back and having to work overtime because of the time I took off, you know? There's a lot of things that a lot of people say they want to accomplish. What's going on, Benicia? Appreciate you hopping on here. There's a lot of people. So you ask people, what are their goals before bef- before you even present your opportunity? Because you can expect that you can expect that to come. Ask them what are their goals. When people begin to ask you uh, what what are some of the goals, like a matter of fact, Miss Benicia, she's a great example. One of the things she tell people is they make a list. She's a she's a life coach, and one of the things she does, she asks them what are some of the things that you're looking for. See, you have a lot of people that make excuses about the people that they meet. She say, write down your list. If you don't have a list, then you don't know exactly who you're looking for. So you're going to make a list. You're going to write down the things that you want to get accomplished. You're going to ask these people, what are the things that you want to get accomplished? Okay. What are the things that you want to get accomplished? When they, when they tell you what you want to get accomplished, remember a few of those things that they said that they want to get accomplished. The next thing you're going to say, ask them, what kind of time are you devoting into accomplishing those goals? And believe it or not, so many people have so many things that they say they want to accomplish. And almost, I can almost guarantee you just about 95% of those people are doing nothing to accomplish those goals. I can almost guarantee you. I can't give you an exact number because I don't know who people ask. But if you, I, I give you a perfect example. Someone, uh, I ask someone, what do you want to do? Man, I want to be a professional basketball player. I talk to teenagers all the time. I want to be able to pers- uh, be a um, 
Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Share it. Matter of fact, if all you all, if you're finding some value, I ask that you share this thing out. If this is resonating with, this is making sense to you, if this is a value to you, share this thing out for everybody on it. If you're watching the recording on this thing, it's not too late. Share it out if this makes sense to you. For all you all that do, I appreciate it. All right, so when you ask them that, I, I'll give you a personal example. I ask someone, what do they want to do? I want to play professional basketball. Okay, what are you doing right now to start preparing yourself for personal basketball? This is a teenager that I'm talking to, but I go to practice every day. Okay, everybody goes to practice. They'll say, what are you doing outside of practice? Nothing. If you do that, you can ask the adult the same thing. What is, what is some of your goals? Some people say, I want to make six figures. All right, so what are you doing to work to a six figure? Well, I own my own business. All right, so what are you doing in your business to be able to do that? Uh, well, I'm, they don't have a goal. They don't have anything that they're really doing to actually go toward their goal. So you ask them, what are your goals? And what kind of time are you putting toward accomplishing those goals? And a lot of people realize when you get to ask them questions, this is not to insult them. <coughs> And some people take this in an insulting manner, but this is not to insult them. This is to get them thinking, I actually, I, I really do want to accomplish these things, but I'm really not doing anything toward getting these things done. And whether it's a brand new car, you know, a lot of people say they want to get a new house, but they live in an apartment, but they're going to work each and every day. Like, okay, what are you doing? You're living in these apartments. What are you doing to, uh, to actually get that house? Well, I'm trying to get my credit right. Okay, well, even if you get your credit right, more than likely, you're probably going to have to come up with some kind of money. Or what are you doing, actually doing? And they're not saving any money because they're, they're paying rent. It's not making any sense. You get what I'm saying? So about 95% of the people that say they have goals are not doing anything working toward their goals. So ask them, what kind of time are you putting into working towards your goals? They ask that question most of the time. They're thinking, they'll be like, ah, probably not too much. Your next question. Before they even come up with the I don't have time uh, excuse, because you know it's coming, you're going to tell them, ask them a question. If I can show you how you can gain some time, if I can show you how you regain some of your time and freedom, how important would that be for you to be able to accomplish those goals? And a lot of people say, yeah, that's, that's, that'd be very important. I'd love to be able to get more time. This is where you present your opportunity. Once again, I ask you that question. If I could show you how you can begin to regain some of that time and find that stuff like that for you to be able to get that time freedom that you want to be able to accomplish that thing and get that thing that you want, how important would that be to you? So you're putting it on them. They, uh, you go, you're going to let them know. Matter of, they're, Now they're thinking because you asked them what's their goal. You asked them how much time are they putting toward and they realize I'm not putting as much time as I want to, even though I would like to. And the next question is, how important would it be to you if I could show you how to get that time back? Now they're thinking that would be very important. How can you do that for me? This is where you present your business opportunity, whatever it may be. You don't go all pitchy, and say, you got to look here, you got to sign here, you got to do that. Be like, look, I have something that you may want to take a look at. This may or may not be for you, but this could actually help you get closer to that time freedom that you want. And then they say, more than likely, they're going to want more details. And we say, and at this point, you're not going to just show them a link and give them a link and stuff like that. When will you be free for about an exact time or how long it takes your presentation, whatever it may be. When will you be free about 10 or 15 minutes so you can take a look at this? They're going to give you a time frame when they're free for about 10 or 15 minutes. If they ask you what it is, it will take me too long to explain. But just say, when will you have about 10 or 15 minutes to take a look at something? Uh, I'll probably have it about 7 o'clock tonight. Cool. At seven o'clock at night, I'll make sure I shoot you this info. At about seven, I give you a few extra minutes checking that just in case you have to pause or something. At about seven thirty, I give you a call back and answer any questions that you have about this. You've got your opportunity now. They can't over. They they don't have the objection that I don't have time. You've already eliminated that because you made them think about the time that they want to have, and they didn't even realize that they weren't putting that time into the goals that they want to accomplish. So, yourself. This is just a recap. Yourself. For yourself, if you're making excuses for yourself that I don't have time, write down your must-dos and write down that down, downtime and start utilizing that downtime to actually grow the business and get the results that you want in your business. When people, uh, when you present your business opportunity, when, you, when you're approaching other people, you want to get them thinking about the time that they're not spending that they would like to have to be able to spend. Whether it's time, whether it's, it could be money. It could be money as well. Are you? Uh, do you make the kind of income that you want? Yeah, I wish. I wish I made. But you. It, it depends on your conversation. You can have people that want to make more money. Like, well, um, what do you? Are you actually saving your money to get those things that you want to accomplish? I mean, a lot of people say they want to make a hundred thousand a month, but are you looking toward a hundred thousand in the bank, or you just want to make a hundred thousand? Because you can make a hundred thousand dollars and still have two thousand dollars in the bank at the end of the year because you spent ninety eight thousand dollars on bills, cars, and everything else. Are you looking to save on it? See, you, you got to dig deep to find out what it is that these people want to accomplish and then help them 
you, you start guiding them down the path to show them that you have the solution to be able to help them get that. And that's how you present your business opportunity. So this is how you overcome the objection of, I don't have time for yourself and for others. All right, Jake, appreciate you hopping on. Marianne, Marianne appreciate it. If you all find this of value, Throw me some heart. Throw me some likes. If you agree, if this is something that you have done is worked out, shoot some information. There's a couple of people down there that, that may want to figure out, like, okay, I, I like this. Uh, so how exactly can I get more, more, how do you say, um, information about how to grow my business, stuff like that. I want, I want to know how it is, what kind of business opportunity could I do to be able to have more time, more freedom, stuff like that. If there's information that you're looking for, go ahead and shoot me a link. I, I mean, go ahead and shoot me some uh, a question. Shoot me a question mark. Say info. I, I like more info. Look, I can help you. What's going on, Brian? Appreciate you. I appreciate you hopping on here, and thank you very much. There, there, there are business opportunities all over. Whether you're interested in mine, interested in somebody else, this is not a pitch fest. I'm coming to you to pitch my business opportunity, but I want you to know that if you ever want to have the time freedom that you that a lot of people want to have. Uh, most likely, you will not get it doing the same thing that you're doing right now. You've got to begin to utilize the time that you're using that that you that you're using that you're wasting. You got to be able to utilize that time that you're wasting right now. All right. So if it's if it's something that you're looking at, figure out. Hey, I want to be able to accomplish these things, but I don't know how. Let me know. Send, shoot me a message. I can begin to help you get your stuff together. Matter of fact, once again, there's a young lady. If there's a things in life that you want to accomplish, there's a life coach on here, Benicia. Connect with her. If it's relationship stuff that you want to find, but perhaps and she has a awesome, a awesome fanatic. Um, a fantastic. Not, I didn't mean to say fantastic. A fantastic group and uh, and 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 life coaching skills and stuff like she'd be able to help you get things whether whether it comes with relationship. Um, if it's anything that you need, matter of fact, if there's a question that you want, I'm going to begin to cover some how tos and these tips to twos as well, and I'll probably start going live more than once a day. Uh, these tips to two are great, but I, I want to be able to reach those people that those those people that are getting off work at five or six o'clock. So I may start doing some in the evening as well, but. If you found this a value, like again, that's a share button down at the bottom. Start getting over the I don't have time. Stop making that excuse for yourself and stop allowing other people because I used to I used to have people tell me I don't have time and I would walk away. And that was it. They never heard from me again. My goal is not to walk away from that. I want you to stop BSing yourself. I don't care about you BSing me. I want you to stop BSing yourself and actually give your family back you. Get your family back. Because a lot of people are not spending that time at home, or they're not spending that time with their spouse, they're not spending that time with children that they want to have so bad because they're lying to themselves saying, I don't have time, what all they're doing is wasting the time that they have. So, if you found this of value, hit that share button, like, comment, I appreciate it. Let everybody know about it. Share this out as much as you can. Be able to get this thing out. Uh, if you're looking for different, if you do have your own business and you're still looking for ways to be able to grow your business, whether it's on social media or even offline uh, taxes, there's free training at successwithlending.com. If you go to the tab that says free training, successwithlending.com. If you'd like to work with me, uh, get more information, successwithlending.com. You want to find more of me? Check all that out. Success with Linda. I'm about to get out of here. If you found this thing of value, once again, like, comment, share. And when I end this thing, you're going to see something that says notification on. Make sure you turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single live that I do as I bring you value. That's the scripture today when I told you about well, wasting time. Proverbs 6, verses 9 through 11. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Check it out. Go read it for yourself. And once again, that was the focus on getting moving. Getting out of that state of being a sluggard, getting stop being sluggish, stop laying and sleeping on opportunities that are sitting right before you when there's things that you want to get accomplished in your life. All right, so appreciate you all hopping on. I'm about to get out of here, go get in the sun, get a little bit darker, <laughs> even more. But I'm back. Be looking for more tips or two with Lyndon each and every day. And once again, I'm, I hit you with a random one in the afternoon. I probably I'll be going over training more than likely tonight. So I'll be able to do some share, uh, screen sharing with some folks that want to learn some more techniques on how to grow their business. And um, matter, no, matter of fact, I have a webinar tonight. There's a webinar tonight. I, I'll get the link and I'll share it on my page. For anybody that wants to be able to attend the web, webinar, we're going to be talking about prospecting, how to prospect the correct people for your business opportunity. There's a webinar. I 
I'm so glad I remember that. I'm co-hosting a webinar with my guy Andy tonight. It's starting at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And if you want the, you want to be able to hop on that webinar, send me a link to say, hey, I want to hop on the webby. It's free. It's absolutely free. There's nothing for sale. Uh, but we're going over prospecting, how to prospect and, uh, the right people for your business opportunity. All right. So y'all have a blessed day. I will see y'all a little bit later. All right. Thank you for hopping on.